Hey y'all, Sabrina here, and I am in homeschool planning mode today, and I'm looking at all the things that we may need to bring in, would be nice to bring in this year, and I'm trying to focus on that word need. What do we need this year? Because what I don't want to do is bring in more things that we may or may not use um, that cost me time and research, money, and also then the mental and physical space to give it a home and organize it and keep it maintained and all of that. So what is it that I actually need? And I'm starting by going through my inventory and I'm thinking about the things and pulling out the things that we actually use daily. What do I need to re-up on? But what are those things that we use daily or weekly that add to the ease and flow of our homeschool and that we can easily maintain? So it's also been, I feel like a good investment, again, adding to the ease and flow of our homeschool in the things that we uh, do daily. So I'm gonna turn the camera around now and show you those things. And just again, encourage you to think about the things that you actually need and use in your homeschool because it goes a long way in maintaining your home and your homeschool. So the first thing I wanna share with you is my digital homeschool planner. This is a must every day. We log in to see what we need to do. My kids have their own logins and sometimes I print off their work. But right now, this is a calendar screen up because I'm about to go through and plan out the next school year and block off days that we won't be schooling and weeks that we won't be schooling. So I'm going to do that when I finish recording this or finish that. And then I have my paper planner, which I have a video on how I have this set up that I'll put a card up for. But I track our attendance in here, although it's tracked in here. I just have like a 180 day tracker that I like to keep in here. And then I journal our days. So those two things are definite in our homeschool, my planners. So I don't know where my other child's Chromebook is, but they each have a Chromebook and that really helps us with the flow of our homeschool. So they can log into their homeschool planet for see what they have going on for the day. They can do research on approved websites. They can log into other homeschool programs that we do online. So this is a huge help in our homeschool for them to each have a Chromebook and a pair of headphones. So next on the list are notebooks. This is for my sixth grader. He had a science, history, and English notebook. They are just lined pages, but he likes the texture of these pages. He doesn't mind them. Sometimes there's some sensory things going on, but he didn't mind uh, the papers and these either. These are from the school nest. So he has a mathematics one, a reading one, and a spelling one, and then just a blank journal for um, his daily entries. And then these are his main lesson books. He's gone through four this year so far, uh, well, he'll only go through four this year, two for social studies and two for science. And so he types his paper on his Chromebook, papers on his Chromebooks as well. We say pull them into his main lesson book. And then he usually does some type of illustration to go along with the lessons that he's doing. So these are the notebooks for my sixth grader. So more notebooks here, but this was for my fourth grader this year. He also had the school nest notebooks that he liked writing in. And I'll just show you like, the mathematics one, what it looks like inside. So he's almost done with this one. And then the spelling notebook looks like this inside. And then the reading journal looks like this for a book review. So they, that's what my sixth graders look like too. I just didn't open those, but that's the fourth graders. And he also had a daily journal and then he had main lesson books for social studies and science and English. And he went through about two for each subject this year. And he had started learning to type his papers and we added them into his main lesson books. And sometimes he would draw in his main lesson books and sometimes he would draw on a separate sheet of paper and add them in. But these notebooks were a must for us in our daily homeschool. So the next thing or category on the list are utensils. Now we use our markers and chalk. I really like this chalk. It works really well and this eraser too on our boards. We use these boards for math and grammar and this the back of this board has lines on it. It's just a nice break for copy work or um, practicing cursive, things like that, and just not to have to do it in the book, just switch it up. But we use these daily or multiple times a week. So these are a part of our must-haves. And then 
erasable pens. My oldest does not like using pencils. And so he pretty much writes everything. Um, it's not one to go and focus for me in these friction erasable pens. So my youngest does like using pencils. He actually uses these pencils. We like these too. Um, these are Prisma color, color pencils, but they have erasable, they're erasable. And we use these for grammar when he's writing different parts of speech uh, with Oak Meadow, the curriculum that we use and other curriculums that we've used, they assign different colors to different parts of speech. So when he's writing sentences, he will trade out using these color pencils and have the eraser if he needs them. So what I love though, is that I found, <laughs> trying to find a pencil that could use some sharpening. I found a pencil sharpener I'll link this one for sure that works really well and you don't have to do anything you just put it up there it does its thing and it, it comes back out for you so you, your kids don't have to push it down and jam the uh, pencil sharpener it, it does the work for you, you just gently set it on top so that's been that's been a really nice addition um, these crayons are something that my youngest use with his main lesson book pretty much every day these are worth it they're nice they didn't break they've lasted so we'll have those again next year and then our art drawers they go in here daily for colored pencils to do illustrations in their main lesson books continue working on them these are watercolor pencils so if they want to um, we have these watercolor brushes down here that they can grab and then they have drawing pencils and pens in here and erasers. So these drawers are things that they reach for daily. And that's kind of why they are um, right. The homeschool table is behind me. So this is why these are right here just for easy access. And this is kind of a bonus. I didn't actually add this to the list, but timers. We use timers daily, either on my phone or using this timer to help us stay focused for a period of time before taking a break uh, to work through our lessons. So they don't drag on all day. I don't know if your lessons ever do that, but sometimes if we don't have anywhere to be, lessons tend to drag on if we don't use timers. So that is a bonus thing. So fifth on my list are our homeschool carts. We use these daily. We pull them out. We put them in our hall closet. Mine actually, this little one here slides right under this desk right here. So that's where that one lives. But this one's Cameron's, my youngest. His books are on top in these magazine files. The boards that I just talked about live back there. And then he's got a few utensils that we grab daily that live here. His vocabulary word box. His unit books are stored right here and then his laptop which I don't know where it is <laughs> but it generally lives right here on the cart and the back of his cart looks the same as my sixth graders here their books they can easily access the labels are right here and then he has uh, his color pencils here see there's a board back there in the basket we don't use the board as much with him but we have it there just because he does use it um, every now and then. His laptop and headphones and then unit books and project materials, which there's none in there now, but there is space for it for when we need that. And then my cart has my planner and teacher manuals and things like that. And I've got some of my personal pens and markers that I like to use in my planner um, down there. So that is fifth on the list these home, homeschool carts. I know people have a love-hate relationship with them, um, but they have really worked for us and they stay pretty organized. So the first five things I shared with you are things that we use daily. The next five things and the last five things are things that we use weekly. So they are, the next on the list are resource books. We have these, uh, a world atlas, a US atlas, and where on earth atlas by DK. These are National Geographic. They're fifth edition and we actually just got sixth edition. Uh, so I will probably consign these as to not have more in our household to maintain that I need and take a bookshelf space. We've got some math encyclopedias here, dictionaries they use a couple times a week. I really like this banished boring words. So they each have one, they live on their cart. 
Most of these live on their carts because we reference them so often uh, a couple times a week. So I really like, I'll just quickly show you this table of contents here. It's easy for them to be able to, you know, choose words and mix it up in their writing. So they each have one of those on their cart. They each have a dictionary on their cart and um, they have a thesaurus and uh, this punctuation, a grammar and punctuation book, and then this illustrated punctuation and grammar. These live on my uh, fourth graders cart and this one lives on my sixth graders cart. So those are ones that we reference very often. And these are the history uh, for geography and history, math and language arts. And then for history, we reference these weekly. Um, these are all DK encyclopedias and they're nicely illustrated and just really informative. So we turn to these often for extra tidbits and uh, just to pull in some visuals to our lessons when need be. So that is first on my what we use weekly list and their resource books. Next on the list of things we use weekly are these cookbook holders. They can adjust and we use these a couple of times a week for copy work. And so they'll just rest the book up there. There's a dictionary and it's not tipping over so they can read and see, or if they're taking notes, it comes in handy. So this is something that I felt was worth it and worth giving a home. So it lives right here on their cart. This was where a lot of his resource books that are still on the table um, live. So it says irreference books. So the um, cookbook holder or book stand lives right here on the cart. And I thought that was worth an invest, uh, worth the um, investment and um, making space for in our homeschool. Next on the list are our work boxes. I've shared these before. We don't use these every day, but we use them weekly whenever we have to run errands or there's a class and they can get a little bit done on the way there. Or we'll stop at a park and do a little bit of work while we're out. They're just file boxes. So we drop our work inside. They can put pens and pencils up top here and they just live in the closet behind the carts in our, co in our coat closet and we just grab them when we need them. So those are worth making space for for us and they worked really well. I thought I'd turn the camera back around for the last two items on my list. First of which is our printer and I will link below the printer that we use, but more importantly is the HP, I think it's instant ink program where they can tell when our ink is low and then they just send me the new cartridges. So I don't have to worry about ink. It's cheaper than ink buying ink for me. And yes, I, I really appreciate that program because I do print off things a couple times a week for my kiddos. And then the last thing are a few subscriptions. Uh, well, YouTube, we use that a couple of times a week. Curiosity Streams, I love it for documentaries. Again, I'll link that if you're not familiar with that. And look for a deal on that. I feel like I was able to get it for like $14.99 a year or something like that to start out. Um, and it has been a great addition to our homeschool for documentaries and learning all kinds of things. We're visual learners over here. So um, we, we love our documentaries. And then Audible. We're, we're also Audible <laughs> learners. Uh, and so that is a subscription that we take advantage of a couple times a week, if not daily, but definitely a few times a week. So that's it guys. Those are, I think it ended up being 10 things that we use or categories of things that we use daily that help enhance our homeschool, but we can manage that amount of inventory. So that's all I have for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below. I'll get back to you. Have you started shopping for your new school year? Are you excited about it? Are you making sure that you are staying within um, the money you've allotted for that and the space that you have to store those things. So think about that and I will chat with you soon. Bye guys.